Let's talk about that. I know in Cheap, you said way before EDD, you were a young skin boy getting shit for free. We talking about scamming? I was talking about the scamming lifestyle, yes. Can you touch on this part of your life? Because obviously, you know, the Detroit rap scene really took off with that. Yeah. Um, it was, I feel like you were, you know. No, nah, it was crazy because I was definitely one of the first niggas to rap about scamming. Right. But I was doing it in Oakland, and when I came out to do it, it was so early. People didn't really embrace it. They didn't really embrace it. They was calling me a snitch and all type of shit that don't got nothing to do with me right. ever. But it's just because I was so early talking about the game. But to this day, I never gave out no methods or nothing. I only talked about my the, the lifestyle that come with that. And um, literally, that's it. How did you learn how to scam? Um, Anybody can learn how to scam on YouTube. <laughs> Damn, YouTube. We were just talking about YouTube. And then you just got good at it or what? You were like, okay, this shit. I mean, uh, most scammers that you meet got a certain personality type. We people that like to get uh, buried in new knowledge and figure things out. It's very meticulous and you got to spend a lot of time searching for what's true and what's not. Right. Like any profession that you're trying to get good at. Sure. But there's no rule book, you know? Did you ever feel bad? Sometimes. But the ends justify the means in any situation. And I was always ready for the karma to hit me and it hit me. How? A lot of ways. I think uh, it's a lot of dark shit that happened in my life. Mm -hmm. I lost a lot of people. Right. And sometimes I think about, you know, what could have rolled over to make me end up feeling that way. But at the same time, I try not to dwell on it. I just accept the pain for what it is and keep it pushing. For sure. Yeah. But I mean, you know, that's what uh, it's also what come when you live in an alternative lifestyle. For sure. Did you feel like as the music was taking off, you had to kind of leave that behind? Cause a lot of course, of, of course. It was like a, a no brainer. I damn near felt like Sam wouldn't even fucked with me if I would have just, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it would have been over. I had to prove that I was trying to be serious. That first time I put up to the studio, me and my little brother, we got filet mignon and bottles and <laughs> lobster tails, all type of stuff talking about scamming and it was it's not very uh, it's not a very convincing approach right to tell somebody that you want to be serious about music you know so yeah how did you and sam find each other we were just talking about how we met the, on sam the streets was, of oakland <laughs> <laughs> sam was fucking with uh my boy chris simmons who's like longtime friend directs all the music videos anybody has probably seen for the most part of mine and um he just had a relationship with him he was like man you in la you want to come record you got to hit my boy sam lancaster sam lancaster and they kept saying his whole name right so i was <laughs> like all right let's go there whatever and i pulled up and sam had this whole plan he was managing this artist young pinch at the time he had all, said all these things that he wanted to do with Pinch in that session. And then I left. I went, started getting money, I was booming. Took an L, a big one, something that was hurting me. It was like the money that I was saving, putting to the side in my mind for my rap career, right? But I don't know how this shit worked. Right. Now I know now, That's that was fucking a press budget. <laughs> but I just fucked with him so hard because I went on Instagram after I took that L and I seen he did everything he told me he was going to do for bruh in that session over this time. And I remember, if anybody knows Sam, he going to talk. Yeah. So I was thinking about that shit like, fuck, man, he did everything. I'm finna call this nigga. I called him and I was crying too. I was oh, down. Wow. No, nah, I was down and I was depressed. Like it was a horrible time in my life. Right. I was not okay. I was not okay. But I had access to get money, so that fucked with my mental health because the money made me feel good. Mm -hmm. And I had such good plays at that time. I was just tired of taking the L's 
and then feeling unhappy when I bounce back because I'm supposed to feel like I champion, but I'm still unhappy when I'm getting this money. So I'm calling this nigga sad, like, bro, I just want to rap. And then that's how I locked in with Sam. We had a whole fucking three-year game plan, then I ended up going viral in between. What was that moment you went viral? Man, I just kept doing it. It kept happening. Okay. Kept happening. From my birthday video to the next birthday to the one after that. I had like a three-year run. Every birthday was Aww. hitting. Yeah. When's your birthday? July 26th. Oh, shit. It's coming up. Mm -hmm. Kind of. Yeah. I seen you say, I seen you say you used to throw Project X parties. Yeah. What was Guap like then? I'm sure you were. Guap like then was crazy. I mean, I've always been Guap. <laughs> Guap like then in the Project X shit, though, was really ridiculous. Really. I was also... A dick. Mm. I was a dick as a kid. Oh. I was a dick as a kid. I was a kid that was good at everything. Me and our partners was the sauciest. I didn't want to fuck with nobody because once, because people always used to hate on me. I was just the fashion art kid. So to the super macho niggas, I was gay for everything. Niggas used to do that. So uh, whenever I had a win, I was flexing. What? We got these big ass parties, 2,000 people. Damn, 2000? Yeah, we had to Is get, we school? got lodges in the town. We weren't renting. We started off downtown and moved into lodges. We had to talk to niggas with, you know, Masonic money to go to their spots because it was so big. Niggas couldn't tell me nothing. But at the same time, that was my fallacy, though, because I let my ego inflate whatever success we had at that time. And it stopped me from networking in the ways that I should have. Oh. Just being cocky, not wanting to do some shit. I'm going to tell you like this right now. Uh, my parties and Price's The Rock parties at that time was, oh, I, oh. was the only big things in the Bay. And niggas invented yiking at our shit. Really? The dance. I love Barry. Cool. Sage <laughs> asked me, can he perform Red Nose at, project, at like the third one? And I told him no. Why? Because I was ego? a dick. I'm Damn. telling you, this is how some shit that I fucked up before. And Darian ended up telling him yes. <laughs> but that's how I was moving because niggas was not fucking with us before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, why? I, I didn't I didn't have the same heart now to where I'm just like, nah, it's open arms because I want to win. Back then it was like, I'm winning and you niggas was not letting me. So I'm, you know. But I don't feel that same way no more. I feel like that was my old Bay Area mentality. For sure. I mean, I feel like I, house parties, that was the shit in the Bay. Is there a certain memory from those days that you can recall that stands out? Man, the type of demon time we used to be on. Yo. I don't point. even want to bring up none of the memories. Like, okay. as a kid, 19, me, for me, especially being from the Bay Area, like, 16 to 22, 23, I was fucking, <laughs> fucking. So back when we was throwing them parties, niggas, we was having just like orgies after. Wow. Just grab up six of them, it's four of us, go to somebody's house. Right. It's up. <laughs> and we all just came up racks, throwing a party. It's up. Right. It's up. I was on demon shit though. I was doing wild shit. My we had my dad on here. He'd tell you all the shit that needed walked in on and got mad. Oh at me for my that. God. What do you do? He just didn't call. I remember one time <laughs> we was we was running some hoes at the crib and this nigga came in because he he was riding motorcycles at the time. He left to a little convention. So I snuck in his house, skipped school for four days, had hoes in there all week. Pops came home at the peak of it. Me, all my brothers in there going crazy, doing what we do, nasty things and whatnot, <laughs> attachment to these hoes. And pops walk in, drop the shoe bags. He say, what the fuck, mind you? He got hell about Jordans and shit. He oh. got hella shit for me. I don't get none of that. Somebody, I'm, and it's crazy. I wasn't even the one with, with the bitch in his room, my brother in there. Oh my God, wait, Juice? Nuh-uh. Oh, okay. Skylar was in there, oh. tearing some shit down. and. I'm I'm sitting in there in the kitchen, on the <laughs> counter, getting ate. 
Yeah. <laughs> she was eating. She was a demon. I'm looking down. I can't see my knees. Pops walk in. I'm like, what the fuck? It was crazy. You didn't know he was coming home? Nah, I didn't know where he was at. Oh. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I was a demon, so I don't like to talk about them days. I hear you. I'm not the same. <laughs> I was talking to Two Short yesterday because, you know, he became a father at 52. Yeah. I was like, you just wrapped it up the whole time. Like, how are you so careful? Like, <sighs> you know, it takes some tenacity. It takes some tenacity. <laughs> you got to be on it. Pull out game strong or what? My my pull out game medium. My <laughs> pull out game medium. I'm keeping a hundred. My shit medium. Wait. The dick game strong, but the pull out game medium for real really depends on the girl. How many plan B's you gotta buy? <laughs> I'm not really buying, I, but that's, I ain't, I've been too busy. Okay. <laughs> I, I, inside, I still want to be a hoe. I feel like sometimes, but I'm just getting too busy now. I hear you. I respect that. Like, I'm waking up, working out. We got regiments and shit going on. I've been trying to regulate myself and my own mental health. I love that. So, like, I ain't even. I hear you. Who you listen to when you work out? Shit, I don't really listen to music. I'm trying to get back into being a consumer because I just create so much and I'm always in the studio or we t I just got off tour with this nigga Wale, so much right. music, music, music for three months straight. Right. I don't really listen to music. I just been making it. So what did I, I, li I downloaded uh, Yachty Michigan tape. Oh, okay. Michigan boy boat. Slap. Michigan Boat Boy. I don't know. I don't <laughs> remember the name of it, but I, I just been listening to that. Um, I like, uh, Mr. Uh, Call Me Mr. Put It On. <laughs> that was my favorite song for hella long. <laughs> um, who else have I listened to? Buddy. Oh. All his new shit. I really got Fire. on his, on his album, I Love. There's a song I wrote with this girl named Orion Sun called Dirty Dancer. Okay. It's an R&B song. It's a whole nother vibe. Okay. I've been listening to that too. Fire. I like a, uh, my shit's so eclectic. I just kind of tap in whenever I could tap in. Right. With a song. Talk about how you got on the Wale tour. That's huge. Man, I met this nigga Wale over the course of these last two years, man. We just got hella cool. We got hella cool. First day, I, I pulled up to meet him, right? I don't know him. And I'm a young Oakland nigga. I'm like, man, I don't know. I, I met Cole already. So like, all right, let's see how Wale is. I'm just crossing my goats. I met Drake off. I met Cole right. off. Let's see how Wale is, right? I pull up to the studio. I walk in. They already got a beat up. Business boy made the beat. Oh, Wale in dudes. there with young Chris. Oh, wow. I'm interviewing him for Vlad on Saturday. That's <laughs> my boy. Ooh, Chris got stories. He's been telling me stories Bro, on his motherfucking You got to give me some tea. No, Chris got st <laughs> Chris got to give you the tea. I don't got to give I've interviewed him before, but I didn't I didn't know he got stories. Man, talk about the Kanye West doc oh. with Chris. Because oh. I watched it with him. And, you know, he was Rockefeller. So he telling me everything. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was beautiful. It was, it was beautiful to hear his perspective and had that extra insight. For sure. Yeah. But I mean, that's how the tour with Wale was though. Wale's a person been in the game 15 years, managed to hit Billboard on every motherfucking album and chart somehow with like tearing radio up for 15 years. Right. So that's what it said. It's like, it's crazy to watch and it's crazy to see how everybody on his team was so experienced and um, how they add to to the to the brand that is Wale, mm -hmm. cause I'm on a tour. I was tour managing myself, me and my DJ, who's really tour managing us and ourselves, you know. But it's just us. Damn. We took on all the responsibilities. He was counting in merch, counting out merch. I'm wow. making sure we selling this shit afterwards. Like I really got my machine together on this tour, sure. and uh, first tour. No, nah, it's my seven, six, so, seven. Oh tour. shit. Yeah, I done been on hella tours. This is my first tour this big. Right. But that's how it go. People don't know. You know, I seen Mulatto. They they was trying to do, say some weird shit about her for her tour. Because they see, motherfuckers see you do Rolling Loud and they see you do these big ass stages. But like, that's not how many tickets niggas is actually selling, bro. Right. right. Y'all go to the shows also. So y'all should know as fans, like, niggas 
this person is not bringing 40,000 people here. The festival is because right. all of us are on it right. from little to big. Right. Of course, if a motherfucker had their own show, they're going to sell to wherever they've been able to move hard tickets to. Some people stream so big but can't sell hard tickets. Right. I thought it was a flex that Mulatto was in that room, 2,000 people or some 3,000. I don't know what it was sold out. Mm -hmm. That's what it's supposed to be for where she at. Facts. Facts. So. Have you crossed paths with her? Yeah, I mean, I know her. Okay. I don't know her like that, though. But yeah, I know her people from, from our team. I fuck with them. For sure. Sorry, what were you gonna say before that? That was it for real. I was just talking about wrapping up about the tour. That's okay. what I learned on the tour with Wale. Uh, and we was friends before this, right. this quarantine. So like I got in and we just rapped. Who hit who up? He hit, I think he might've hit me. Okay, that's fire. Yeah. What, Instagram DM? That's what people- Twitter. Oh, okay. Twitter. Nice. Most of, my, most of my link up, especially in music, been off Twitter. That's crazy. Yeah. I love Twitter. Twitter type. Yeah. This bitch is on Twitter. <laughs> I saw that. Better than Instagram? Because don't you got to follow them to for them to it's DM just, you? Instagram is a clout dance, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like as soon as it. I slide into somebody DMs on Instagram, it's like, hey, go look at my pics. Look at the blue check. Clearly, this is, you know. <laughs> Twitter could be a little bit more intimate. And that's honestly how I prefer to communicate because... Yeah, they could see the blue check, but like, you would find a badass bitch with 300 followers. <laughs> she like everything you like, painting, be in LA sometimes, but she live in New York or some shit like yeah. that. That's how you knock her on right. Twitter. Right. Cause she gone, motherfucker might be intimidated from, for, from the gram too. Right. This is a good time to say you got fans in Costa Rica. Yeah. I do got fans in Costa Rica. I love Costa Rica. I do too. That's one of the most beautiful places I've been. I cannot, hey, I cannot wait till I touch down in Costa Rica. Wait, I'm it's coming. gonna be some it's gonna be some shit, nigga. <laughs> it's gonna be some shit. I'm i I'm I'm going down there ready to black out. <laughs> when are you going? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know, but I'm ready to go. That's hilarious. Somebody need to book me for something in Costa Rica. I'm gonna right. go out there, only perform Costa Rica twelve times in a row. <laughs> Fuck air bitch out the show. Yo. Leave 12 babies out there, come back in, I don't know, maybe like six, eight months before all of them pop, <laughs> you know, get to know them, name them all, oh, get up out of there. Yeah, you want kids, Quap? That's my Costa Rica plan. Right. <laughs>